All right, that's it. You know how to paint now. <laughs> no, just kidding. But you have made it through Digital Painting 101, and you know, that's a good first step. The reasonable question now is, well, what do I do next? If you've been to the free library page, you can see that there's just lots and lots of stuff. Yes, it is in order, but if you start from the beginning, the next section that you're going to hit here are traditional drawing techniques. So I've just gone through all these specific ways we're going to be using Photoshop, and then we're going to totally change tack and talk about pencils and erasers and stuff. And this has to do with that dichotomy we have between art skills and software skills. And because I've never met you, I don't actually know where you lie on this spectrum. For some people already have art skills, and for you, I might actually suggest skipping sections two and three, and four and five. What you wanna do is go straight down here to making the switch to digital tools. Specifically, I want to call your attention to the Let's Paint series. On the front page of the website, these are called process demonstrations, and they involve painting super basic things like spatulas and tea kettles. So you might say, why would I wanna paint a spatula? The reason I picked this is just because it is a basic object sitting on a flat background. But when we look back here, you can see there's a bunch of these things. What I did with these videos is not to show you how to paint the most amazing spatula. Instead, what I use each of these as is a different strategy for painting. Because I've already shown you the basic tools we're gonna use, and you may or may not already have art skills, but I think when you start making a digital painting, it's important to know your game plan. Every artist paints a little differently, so I'd be lying to tell you there's one way to paint and all you need to do is learn. But the idea with these videos here is to see some high level overviews of what making paintings can look like. Each one is different and they're different on purpose. What they don't do is get into the really specific nitty gritty tools but I encourage you to watch these before you start watching the more specific tool videos. So let's say you've watched all these, you're feeling like you have a general grasp of what digital painting looks like at a high level, then you go back to the free library and then get into really specific stuff. Things like opacity versus flow, smudge tool blending. I've kept each of these techniques in their own five minute video and I've really done my best to make each one clear and concise. So at this point, I'd suggest you either check out chapters two, three, four, five, and six to learn about traditional drawing techniques because art skills, they really are crucial. Or if you're feeling comfortable with your art skills, check out the process demonstrations, the let's paint videos, and start learning about that painting strategy. So have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.